Welcome to Reading Fides at Ratio, Part 2. If you haven't already, check out Part 1, linked to in the description below. Now that we've thought about the book, it's time to think through the book. The first step to actively reading and thinking through a book is to first look at the book, then look through the book. Looking at a book involves systematically skimming its contents, while looking through the book is going to involve superficially reading the book. The goal is to inspect the content of the book. So these two activities are commonly referred to as pre-reading or inspectional reading. Now, some of this language may sound strange to a lot of you, but to some of you, it might sound incredibly familiar. So if you're wondering, I am borrowing heavily, bordering on plagiarizing, Mortimer Adler and Charles Van Doren's approach to reading found in How to Read a Book. So if you want to know more about my approach to reading, you, you'll find more than what I can present here in How to Read a Book. Now, before we look at the book, then look through it, it's important to be able to classify the book you're reading. There are many different types of books, and your approach to reading will depend heavily on the kind of book you're reading. And so it's important to note that Fides et Ratio is an expository work. An expository work seeks to expose an idea as true by explaining the meaning of the idea, demonstrating the reasons to believe the idea, and interpreting the idea by inviting the reader to see its relevance in a larger context. What idea is Pope St. John Paul II trying to expose as true in Fides et Ratio? We find this idea in his opening address as he writes, Faith and reason are like two wings on which the human spirit rises to the contemplation of truth, and God has placed in the human heart a desire to know the truth, and a word to know himself, so that by knowing and loving God, men and women may also come to the fullness of truth about themselves. As the reader of an expository work, your first job is to find where the author explains, demonstrates support, and interprets the idea. These jobs are accomplished by looking at the book, then looking through the book. Looking at the book involves systematically skimming its contents. The first place you want to spend some time systematically skimming is in the table of contents. The table of contents provides you with a feel for the overall structure of the book. But you may notice that in Fides et Ratio, there is no table of contents. But after the title page, the publishers provide a blank sheet. And as you can see in my copy, I went ahead and made my own table of contents. This is a great exercise to familiarize you with the different chapters and the structure of the book. So I encourage you at this point to pause the video and take some time to make your own table of contents. Systematically skimming also involves thumbing through the contents of the book. Basically, you're just going to flip through the pages and break in the spine. And as you flip through, just glance over the pages and glance over the words and see what pops out to you. Now, authors often use keywords to signal to the reader, hey, this is important, pay close attention. And these keywords could include in summary, in conclusion, to synthesize, and other such keywords. Now, as you're thumbing through, as you come across them, read with a pencil, and you notice I put a line in the margin here. That way, when I go back over this section, this tells me, hey, slow down right here, he's saying something important. Now, as you're thumbing through the contents, you may also want to dive in and out of the text and take a quick look at the introductory paragraph of each chapter and the concluding paragraph of each chapter. Because in the introduction to the chapter, the author is going to set up the content. And in the conclusion, they're going to highlight their main points. So this is a great strategy for getting familiar with the contents. Looking at the book through systematic skimming provides the reader with a roadmap to navigate the contents of the book. The length of this process can be anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, depending on how much you want to dive in and out of the text. It's crucial to become familiar with the content in this way, to have a prepared mind, to actively engage with the text. So it turns out that systematically skimming is an incredibly active task. 
Looking at the book is the first step to successfully pre-reading it. The second task is to look through the book by superficially reading its contents. Now, this advice given by Mortimer Adler and Charles Van Dorn in How to Read a Book was the most difficult for me to accept. I was incredibly skeptical. It seems like kind of a waste of time. Why not get to the work of actively reading the book? Given my initial skepticism, I understand how difficult it is to be persuaded to take up the habit of superficial reading. However, after I began to put superficial reading into practice and to make it a habit, it became one of the most important steps for actively reading a book. I know it's difficult to start the practice. I'll try to persuade you with a few analogies. Superficial reading is a lot like learning to ride a bicycle, playing music, or cooking. When learning to ride a bicycle, at first, it's incredibly awkward. You have to go through the movements. You have to become familiar with the process. And then, and only then, after the discipline of practice, are you free to enjoy riding a bicycle? And with music, when you're learning a new piece, it's incredibly awkward at first as you're trying to get familiar with it and putting it into practice. But after discipline, you're then free to enjoy playing the music and you're also free to play it in a way that others enjoy it. Now with cooking. The first time you try out a recipe, it might not turn out that well. But once you become familiar with the ingredients and the process, you're free to improvise a little bit and put more of yourself into the activity. This is what happens when we exercise great discipline. Discipline frees us to enjoy our activity and to put more of ourselves into it. Likewise with reading, the discipline of systematic skimming and superficial reading get us through that awkward period of becoming familiar with the content, giving it a quick once over, reading through the book without stopping, as quickly as we can, not worrying about understanding. That way, when we go through the book again, we're free to enjoy it, to actively engage with it, and put more of ourselves into the task. Like with systematic skimming, the goal here is not to understand the text, but to become more familiar with the content. Looking through the book by superficially reading it allows the reader to be familiar with the book providing the foundation for the work of actively thinking through the book. By the time you finish looking at and through the book, you're well prepared to accomplish the initial tasks of reading and expository work, to find where the author explains the idea, demonstrates support, and interprets the idea. You're also at a great place to evaluate the goals you made when thinking about the book, your personal reasons for reading Fides et Ratio. Now that you're more familiar with the content, you can find where in the book you're most going to get to work accomplishing those goals. An analogy that fits well here is given by Mortimer Adler and Charles Van Doren in How to Read a Book. It's the analogy of playing catch. Reading a book is a lot like playing catch. It's not a passive thing, and you can't catch a ball passively. You can only catch a ball actively by cooperating with the one who throws it. We can take the analogy a step further. It's a lot like pitcher and catcher. Before the pitcher throws the ball, he and the catcher negotiate about what kind of pitch is going to be given. Is it going to be a curveball, a fastball, a slider? Now, this is crucial because that negotiation allows the catcher to prepare themselves and to set up and to know where to expect the ball. The same is true for reading. When we accomplish the job of looking at and through the book, we're well prepared to negotiate with the author and to know where to get to work. This allows us to read books as a conversation with the author. Much like a pitcher and a catcher, the author and the reader negotiate and collaborate so that the reader can set themselves up in the best position to catch what the author is throwing. And we can judge reading by how much of what the author throws do we catch. Reading is an incredibly active and collaborative task. The discipline that this approach offers frees a reader to engage with a book like a conversation with the author. There can be this back and forth as you ask questions and allow the author to answer. And it's fitting that we're going through Fides et Ratio because reading a book like a conversation with the author is reading the book with faith and reason. 
Approach great books with faith and reason by recognizing the love with which the author wrote, faith, and responding to love with love by being a demanding reader, reason. Inspectional reading is the first step to being a demanding reader, and this is a mark of respect for the author, that you hold them to task for the goals that they set up, the goals you have, and finding that common ground where they meet. So let's recap. In this video, we explored looking at and then through a book by first going over the nature of an expository work. And then we explored how to look at a book by systematically skimming its contents, and then to look through a book by superficially reading it. And then finally, to approach great books as a conversation with the author. Like in the last video, I'm gonna offer you two challenges before going on to part three. Challenge one, thumb through the book and mark notable sections. Challenge two, superficially read the book. This can take anywhere from two to three hours depending on your reading speed. Now, if you're not at this point convinced to superficially read a book, maybe you can at least listen to it. And if you're interested in that, go check out my podcast, the Festina Lente podcast. At episode two, I begin reading out loud through Fides et Ratio. Check out the link in the description below. Thank you for joining me and trying to get the most out of reading Fides et Ratio with realistic considerations of our limited time, energy, and effort. My hope is that by taking the time to inspectionally read, that it frees up your effort and energy to approach the text with what feels like a lot less effort, but you end up being a lot more active. Until next time, be well and do good things.